in terms of the digital world, obviously a big change is over the last 10 years in how all arts organizations work. How much do you feel, kind of how much attention do you pay to digital trends and, and how does that affect your organization? I'd say enormously. Um, the British Council works in 110 countries around the world. Uh, Two of those are very large, well, several of those are very large, but two particularly very large. One is China and the other is India. And I know that the population of India is 1.2 billion, and I can't remember how many billion in China. A very large number of people. So if we're going to have, um, I was going to say, meaningful interaction, that, that's not true. You can have a meaningful interaction. The most meaningful interaction for me still is face to face. But to be able to get an impact across a much greater number of people and a greater geographical territory. Digital is absolutely essential and we're doing a lot of work at the moment, specifically in China and India. Um, looking at audiences and how young people particularly are consuming culture over the internet and we know that they're doing it a lot. There's no point putting stuff out there and hoping people will find it. So at the moment, I know we're doing a lot of research about what platforms are being accessed, what the habits are, what the trends are. It looks as though there, there are a lot of young people who are accessing digital culture as an alternative to the live experience if they can't find that. And we're working in partnership with a lot of organisations in the UK <clears throat> to use and tailor content to different countries. And that means actually looking at how to pro promote it, how to produce it, because it's not the same as producing digital content to people like you, who have the alternative, you've got the option of the live experience as well, and what you're looking for often is something that expands it, complements it. Uh, there's also the language issue. In China, um, everything needs translating. So at the moment, we're working very hard in both China and India on these platforms, but to make sure that they reach the people that are interested or to find people that could be interested to promote the, the art of the UK. So yes, digital is very important. And then, of course, the artists will always use the latest technology. So digital is a very important part of um, the work that we do online and live as well. I mean, it's crucially important, but we don't have the resources to do anything like the amount of work on those platforms that we would like to. Um, we're devoting more and more resource to digital, just as we're devoting more and more resource to doing things beyond our galleries in the UK. But we find it very difficult, not least because we don't have the resource to move beyond in any really significant way, we can do a small amount, but not in any really significant way beyond English language. Mm -hmm. So we're obviously only reaching those people who are have some idea what they are going to encounter, other than those who we're able to meet through, greet and meet through social media. Mm -hmm. And more people come to Tate through social media than they do direct to the Tate site. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we're working with you on the China project. Mm -hmm. Will benefit. Is, <laughs> Thank you. But so, social media is an interesting thing. I don't. Were, were any of you at the ABO conference in Gateshead? Uh, there was a, a very interesting session about um, social media and using it in concerts, before concerts, after concerts. How to change the concert format. How to get the bells and whistles all singing, all dancing. The, the, it was, it was mm. you know, the, the kind of thing that we've got used to. And it suddenly struck me that I wonder if we'll ever come full circle, that people who are used to multitasking all the time will suddenly realize that they're multitasking themselves off the face of the universe. And what they're going to long for is an excuse to be able to focus on just one thing. So instead of getting up, I mean, OK, I'll confess, when I wake up, before I've got out of bed, I've checked Facebook, I've checked my iPhone, my work emails, and my Blackberry. So that's it. And by then, I'm buzzing. Uh, but every day? Um, yeah, every day. <laughs> it's really it's terribly pathetic. <laughs> so for me to go to a concert, what I actually want is that spiritual, that ability to focus down on something. 
And in fact, there is the first mindfulness opera being produced at the Barbican. Rolf Hind has written a four-hour opera, which is mindfulness meditation. So I do wonder whether we'll come round full circle. You think you're banning, banning phones in the galleries? No, we can't possibly ban phones in the galleries. But, um, but that is, I, I guess, not possible. I would that. certainly encourage people to spend more time in the galleries without their phones. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat>